G'day everyone. Day three, electric magnetic optical listening probe. So last year for day 10 and day 12, we made an optical listener, um, which was mainly for remote control receiving um, testing. So we also used it in a couple of other projects uh, like the AM transmitter project, I think and a few other things. It's become indispensable around the lab. This is probably one of the, the best things I've ever built really in terms of uh, the amount of use I've got out of it. Here uh, at Valve we're doing a lot of VR related um, electro-optical, electromechanical systems and it's always handy to have a simple tool that can tell you if something's emitting modulated light. This is super handy for that and I should probably build a thousand other things. I should probably make a kit out of the things that's that damn useful. So everyone around here loves it and I always have to go and retrieve it from someone else's desk because someone's borrowing it. Another thing that we use, this was the Christmas tree dead bulb locator project last year. So it's just a FET probe. It picks up changing electric fields. Um, if you put it near like a mains cable, it'll pick up the hash on it and you can go along until you find where the break in the, the set of um, Christmas lights was. So this was also extremely popular. Um, got a write up on a couple of websites many people have built something similar and it's pretty darn useful. The one thing I didn't like about it, it wasn't particularly sensitive. I mean, it's, it's reasonably sensitive but it only runs off 3 volts and using 3 volts it's hard to get enough swing to drive a voltage driven device like a piezoelectric um, element to reasonable amplitudes of sound. So even though the front end has plenty of sensitivity, the, the speaker driver leaves a little bit to be desired. Also Electric and optical are, you know, are only two possible things that can be modulated. There's also the magnetic field around things. Magnetic fields are extremely penetrating and most things produce them. Um, most electronic things produce them. So I decided to build a combination device. The, the new feature as far as this video goes is the magnetic sensing. So there's a coil here for picking up magnetic fields. But it also includes a photodiode, which is BPW34, and an electric field detecting probe. Um, this is just a large piece of metal that I've, a uh, piece of circuit board that I've wrapped in um, capped on tape to insulate it so I can go probing at things without shocking myself. But basically these two are the same and then there's this additional circuit and the audio amplifier is much the same. But the whole thing runs off 9 volts. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the magnetic side of it first, seeing that's the new feature. Alright, so here is an LCR meter, uh, it's a BK Precision, it's kind of, well, it's useful, I actually hate it, but it's not much good at RF, it only measures at fairly low frequencies. They do have a, another model, I think, that has a 100 kilohertz test feature. Anyway, this is not a review about this meter, um, but for our purposes, it has a switching supply in it, which produces a magnetic field noise. So at the moment you can hear there's no emissions. So once I turn it on, must be located about here. And the magnetic field changing goes away once you turn it off. Now, in order to select between magnetic, optical and electric, I've just got a jumper that just simply turns on the power to the respective sub-circuit. You can run all three at once if you want. The signals are mixed at the audio amplifier, but in order to be able to tell exactly what's going on, it's useful to you know be able to turn them off independently. So let's go electric for a minute. So the display before wasn't giving us a magnetic signal, but the display obviously because it's an LCD display, it has a rapidly changing um, you know biasing supply that's being alternating driving the segments, and you can hear. The switcher doesn't actually emit any electric noise of significance. You can hear a little bit of switching hash from the, the display and the rest of the electronics. But the magnetic components aren't producing any effect on the electric detector, which is super handy if you want to isolate what's going on. Now this doesn't emit light, so that's not a particularly useful test for the optical side of things, but if we plug in the optical side, we have remote control laser pointer presenter thing here. So it's got up and down buttons and a laser. So the laser is modulated which is kind of handy for testing things. And it also has 
sort of conventional, I think it's a Rex80 modulated um, remote control signal. This is also particularly useful for testing some of our other systems here, but uh, I got this on Amazon, it was super cheap, and uh, it's just a you know, general purpose modulated light source for testing amplifiers and things like that. Okay, so let's try a different remote control transmitter. So anything pretty much that has a modulated optical source will produce some kind of chirping sound in this within you know, the range of human hearing, obviously. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty darn handy. It, the fact that it can isolate the three different ways of actually measuring the, the unintended emissions, generally, of an, or intended emissions of a device is really handy. So if I have my, my mobile phone here, so optically it's not putting out anything at the moment, obviously it's, it's in you know, sleep mode. So I turn it on, the backlight isn't modulated, so it looks pretty boring. Let's put this in electric mode. Okay, nothing. That's actually the cap touch polling. If I let it go for a minute, it'll start to sleep. Changes to not probably for power saving, I imagine it just doesn't pull it as much. All right, let's try magnetic. <laughs> the electromagnetic emissions also, um, the, the RF emissions also get rectified by the. Actually, I'm not entirely sure which particular part of the circuit is. It's probably the FET front end. There's probably a little bit of non-linearity in there. So it does pick up RF as well as audio frequency modulated electric fields. Okay. So back to magnetic. So even when it's off... You can hear that there's some switches in there doing something. Let's turn it on. It's a lot more busy now. Let's make it do something RF related. Oh yeah. Anyway. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I think this is a pretty cool little toy. I might actually make a uh, a um, circuit board for it because I'm pretty sure a couple of other people around here are going to want one and as I said I'm sick of retrieving it from their desk so I'll probably have to make one for them as well. It's just put together on uh, on this breadboard for tonight so you know, it took an hour or two to just throw it together. The circuit's super simple. Okay, So there's the three different amplifiers, three different front ends. This is the electric front end. You can see it's basically identical to last year's. It's just a 10 meg resistor to bias the, the FET and a metal plate. Um, reasonable size metal plate is really handy, it makes it more sensitive. The magnetic version um, has a 5 milli 6 or 5.6 millihenry inductor which is just a, a ferrite choke. Um, it has about 20 ohms DC resistance. I was thinking about feeding it into the emitter of this transistor and I played around with trying to combine these two circuits and a bunch of other things. And I had some success. There was definitely ways to do it. But it was it was sort of inelegant and it was just easier to do this. It also lets you pick, like if you want only a magnetic one, you just need to build the magnetic version and the and the audio amplifier and you this obviously goes here. Just so feeds the audio signal into this audio amplifier. Audio amplifier is exactly the same as um, the electric, uh, sorry, the optical receiver last year as well, except it's, um, I changed the resistors a little bit for um, reasonable swing on the particular piezo speakers I was using. The optical is pretty much the same, it's got this diode front end, sort of pseudo logarithmic front end. Again, it's just a FET, um, nothing particularly special about it. The reverse bias on the diode gives it actually pretty good bandwidth, a lot more than the audio um, range that you can actually hear coming out of this. And you could have them all run at once, or you could have them switched independently like I did. I have a power switch because the thing pulls about 7 milliamps. These uh, transistor stages in particular are running pretty high current to get uh, reasonable sensitivity and um, 
yeah, I could have done it. <laughs> I could have spent a lot more time trying to make a a sensitive low noise and low current amplifier, but for a toy like this, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter. You just turn it off when you're done, and I put a switch on it this time at least, so I don't have to keep unplugging the battery, which is the most annoying thing from the previous version. But I think that'll be fine. I mean, yeah, it'll rapidly kill the battery, obviously. This is only a 9-volt battery, and 8 or 9 milliamps will kill the battery pretty quickly, but as long as you don't leave it on, you're fine. Maybe I should have added a little LED, um, yeah, just a resistor and an LED, which would obviously be a good addition if you were going to do this yourself. Alrighty, I will link the, um, the projects from last year, just to put it in context in the description. Uh, and as always, any questions, feel free to ask. If I, as it goes for all my videos, if I add write-ups or, you know, I link the circuit diagram or something later on, it's all going to end up down in the description below. People ask me that all the time. It's just, you know, click on the see more, I think it is, the more link, and it'll drop down and you can see the text that I'm going to put in there. Alrighty, um, until tomorrow? Who knows what we're going to do tomorrow? I haven't actually decided yet. Uh, people have been asking for RF stuff. I know, um... One Ben asked me to do some stuff on inductors and um, toroidal inductors and chokes and things, which is actually a really interesting topic and could be the topic of several days. We'll see if we can cover the basics. Alrighty, until then, bye.